Now, uh, a bit about today, we're we'll looking backward and forward um, with uh, an evaluation of the uh, the uh, last uh, session, this last year's session of aging with pride and, and a bit about where we might wish to go, where you might wish to go in the, uh, in the future. So if I could have my first, uh, first slide. Everybody do an interpretive dance while I get this roll. Uh, Can we use the well, maybe what I'll, I'll You're on. <laughs> <laughs> you something about the Aging with Pride has basically been around as a project of the Eminent Pride Seniors Group in collaboration with SAGE and the Pride Center of Edmonton for about five years. The first year was really spent in calling, I think, most of the major centers in North America to see what examples of success on things like this there were. And Winnipeg, as is so often the case with Winnipeg, seemed to be the the city that actually had the most advanced uh, thing. I was surprised to discover that um, this was, of course, during pandemic, so we were restricted to, uh, to Zoom and, and things like that. San Francisco, for example, had uh, a couple of people, and that was it. Uh, so, so we started initially because of the pandemic and persisted for about a year with a phone uh, uh, project that we'd done through Senior Centers Without Walls and the uh, Primary Care Network uh, of uh, physicians and other healthcare providers. That never really took off. And when we con converted to Zoom three years ago, I think we've had a certainly a more consistent uh, uh, thing. So uh, when Laurie Winder was with us, and Laurie, by the way, I'm told has a new job, and uh, so we're all happy for that. When But when Laurie was with us in January, uh, she did um, uh, uh, establish a, a, uh, a little survey, and I'm going to present the results of this survey uh, uh, I would would say uh, I'm surprised. I don't know who the we had about eighteen uh, res responses, uh, and uh, I don't know about the people who responded who had never been to any of the meetings. Uh, but uh, as you can see, eighteen out of the the attendance over a month's time, I thought was a reasonable um, a reasonable uh, result. Uh, this. I remember is in January when we were in the transition. Um, I know that, um, that a number of people were in fact still nervous about uh, in-person events. So as you can see, uh, there were a large number of people who were simply were attending uh, by online sessions, by Zoom sessions. I've been taking the attendance over the months of March, April, and May. And we average um, 12 attendees. It ranges from a low of six to a high of 18. Uh, but 12, 12, 12 attendees is the uh, the arithmetical average for, for those months. And overwhelmingly, people are coming in person, although there are people for individual reasons who continue to come online, people like Joe, who's out of town, and, and people who simply find it uh, inconvenient or difficult to get uh, here. Right, what's that, Eric? Oh, I'm just trying to try to try to get rid of the bottom bar. Oh, uh, you seem to have succeeded. But you've also uh, oh, have I? stopped mm -hmm. the capacity to advance. Sorry about that. Again, technical. So, so it has re basically since the end or the slowing down of the pandemic is probably the more accurate thing to say. Since the uh, that crisis, uh, the uh, switch really has been too in person from predominantly the uh, uh, thing. Um, you just have to tell me when you want. To. Oh, I will tell you. 
our entertainment um, um, sessions, what we, we've really done three a year. At Christmas, we have done uh, a drag show on one occasion, a carol sing on the other. At, on St. Patrick's Day, uh, Roger Helfrick uh, has uh, uh, done Celtic music. Uh, Roger's an expert harpist and, uh, and a splendid singer. And uh, I'm finding that we have the June strawberry tea. These are, these events are overwhelming. They are most popular. They probably have 40, 40 odd people. At least the one of the probably more than that for the strawberry tea, partially because we open it up to everyone and probably advertise more vigorously than we should. What is interesting and what confirms what I, was my impression, the people who come to the entertainment for the most part don't come to anything else. So uh, I'm not sure what conclusions we draw from that. If I could have the next slide, please. Uh, Okay, the uh, quarterly wrap-up series are not particularly popular. This is probably the largest group we've seen yeah. for any of the evaluation sessions. So I thank you for, for coming because it really, it really is important. And uh, next, please. And the, we, uh, there was an opportunity on, on uh, Laurie's survey to get particular comments. And I've simply included these uh, without any editorial uh, uh, comment, but maybe I'll make a little bit uh, here. So but what are the sorts of things that come come to, to, to mind? Firstly, uh, the often not in town and not being willing to come downtown are important issues and why I think it's important if we're going to re retain this, to retain the Zoom component. Um, um, and then the rest uh, you can read for uh, for that and uh, uh, the sorts of things that, that you would expect that uh, people have, have it on the next slide, please. And this is the uh, second, uh, the uh, third one. Uh, uh, there and some of these are have more specific ideas. I think that we need to uh, talk about. Um, we did have a run of rather gloomy subjects, uh, well presented uh, and actually reasonably and reasonably atten uh, attended as well. But at the end of the day, you felt that we were all sort of preparing our caskets rather than, <laughs> than anything else. So I think that's a, that third comment is a, is a relevant uh, comment. Uh, we yes, have had people from the Pride Center uh, and uh, that's their comment, not my, my comment. The Pride Center is anything but more of them. It faces large challenges. I think you've heard from SJ as the number of things they do. Did someone have a comment uh, that I, uh, and the political issues, well, we'll leave Michael to talk about that. The whole issue of loneliness is an important one. One of the primary reasons why we set up this group was to try to reach uh, people who might be, uh, and, and is that my last slide? Yeah, that's what, no, we've got the board. Sorry, the right mouse on the right screen. Okay, these are, what can we do, part one and part two, what can we do? Oh, okay, so these are also uh, uh, more uh, comments. Uh, the person, you know, there are people who will come up, one of the questions that comes up with, uh, with some of these things really has to do with the timing, both the frequency, the day and the hour of the day in which we should be holding these. Uh, uh, the, uh, so, uh, and that clearly is a problem for uh, some people. Uh, and uh, the the notion of increasing the sort of simply a discussion is uh, is an issue. Uh, uh, 
uh, I'm pleased to see that someone who finds it difficult to make it in the morning is actually watching the YouTube videos. That's one thing we really haven't assessed is uh, what use the YouTube videos are actually being put to. Mm -hmm. uh, and the next one is... Uh, this is part two. Yeah. Again, downtown is a problem for a whole lot of things. The expense and difficulty of parking, the social disorder around the building, uh, these are, uh, you know, even the suggestion of later in the afternoon, or obviously anyone who is working 11 o'clock on Thursday is probably about as bad a time. As, or uh, one or like having it another other day too. Well, that, I think that's one thing we need to to look at is either rotating it to various places or simply choosing another venue. The trouble is that we uh, the fact that we have this very good setup, which we're probably not going to find um, elsewhere for the Zoom. Giving more details about the guest speaker. Um, We basically give the information that we have, um, and uh, uh, but we should look to do that. The real issue, in my judgment, isn't so much giving the details; it's giving adequate time for people to to learn. Because oftentimes mm -hmm. we're just on the week before announcing and and a way of, of letting people know uh, with a with a longer timeline what something which may be a particular interest to them will be happening. And finally, uh, this is a comment on the, the last one. Um, I, I, particularly sexual health, um, I'm not sure that we necessarily want uh, an hour on erectile dysfunction, but perhaps we do. Uh, Demonstration. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the, the general issue of medical and health issues which may be specific to uh, uh, this community, to our community, uh, is certainly an idea worth uh, thinking about the issue there as far as I think as finding the person who can actually give out, uh, who has both the time and the knowledge and that, that could be tough. And I think that's my last slide. I was just looking at the book here. It's the... Oh, uh, okay. No. Well, well, uh, <laughs> Thank you. So thank you all for your input. And I'm now gonna gonna open the floor and I'm gonna uh, and have Michael lead the uh, the discussion. And uh, so you had on your uh, your sheet the uh, things what we really like to know is what things did you like, what things did you dislike, what's the time. Uh, Thursday at 11, or do we try to move somewhere else? Do we change venue? Do we change the frequency once a month, twice a month, or do we try to continue on weekly? Uh, do we use the TED Talks and other uh, other things to fill in? Because they've been really quite popular and that they've stimulated a lot of discussion around the table. So I'll turn it over now to... Uh, to Michael. Oh, okay. Um, thanks. Um, and so uh, uh, the information that, that you saw, and, and particularly about um, things that people might like to see, there were actually quite a few uh, points there that might be of interest uh, that we might want to explore a little bit further. But but the notion is um, many of you, uh, all of you have been involved at, at attending sessions and seeing uh, both how they're put together a bit in terms of the pre, you get the note about it and uh, uh, about what it's going to be, and then the actual time, um, and then the special events that we've had, which, are, as was said, um, always attract a larger number, which may have something that we want to think about as well, and that maybe more special events might be useful. I, I'm not saying that that we shouldn't do that. Um, uh, but I think there's some alternatives we we might want to think about. So I think the easiest way um, to start is to say um, uh, maybe think about uh, something that you particularly liked and perhaps a suggestion you have for the future. And I'll just go around and give everyone a chance, and then we'll open it a bit more for 
all discussion. Plus, I will include the folks that are are online. So that we'll be asking what you did kind of think was particularly valuable or you, or you liked, and then um, a, a suggestion you might have about for the future. And then after everyone has a chance, we'll open it up a bit more uh, further for, for general comments or additional comments. So, um, and I'm, I'm probably looking at this direction to start with, <laughs> this direction to start with, um, and and we'll we'll um, um, I think we'll start there. Maybe then I will go to the online people and continue around. So and Eric, if I can put you on <laughs> beginning, I would that would be valuable. A couple of things. Uh, there are options, and it always depends on what people want. Sending out the list of speakers, you know, for the quarter in advance. Sometimes we're you know. A week before our event, yeah. everybody has life. People get busy. A week before the event, uh, that person might give us a call and say, "She's I'm really sorry, but I can't make it." And so it's a mad scramble to to find out who. But we normally we we've done it fairly good. Um, so that is one thing. I, I think overall we tried to present topics that we think of our general interest to seniors in general, as well as to seniors from the 2SL GPT community. Because there's a lot of things that, I don't care if you're gay or lesbian or trans or not, some things apply to every senior and some things are specific to our community. So I, you know, from my, because I'm one of the organizers. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've been, we've tried to be fairly well balanced between specifically queer issues and issues that uh, face uh, seniors in general. Uh, did I answer your question? A particular, any particular suggestion for the future? <clears throat> for the future, we do have a possibility. Uh, of meeting at say at uh, CISA instead, but Sage is one of our partners. And uh, again, this technology is wonderful, wonderful here. So and some other people like me don't have a way to get to other places either. This is close for me. What is CISA? Sorry. CISA is the Southeast Edmonton Seniors Association. It's in the yeah. Hollywood name. Yeah. yeah. And so, anyways, that, that was it. It's just okay. that, um, I, I can't think of any more subjects. Right. To suggest Thank you. Good. I'm done. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to go to Dee Milner, who's online. And Dee, you'll have to, um, yeah, yeah, you can, we can hear you now. So, Dee, that question was a little bit anything you thought. Uh, was particularly something that that you thought went well or liked or whatever, and then for uh, a suggestion or two that you have for the future. Thanks. You're on. Michael, um, the thing I've appreciated the most is that the sessions are recorded, um, because there are different life things that mess up me attending. So it can be I forget, or I have an errand to do, or a doctor's appointment. And so, like, a, Wait, your voice, your voice disappeared. Oh, um, I just am so glad that there is a recording that I can go back and listen to it. Um, the other thing I was just reflecting a lot about uh, the time. Eleven o'clock to me is in the middle of my morning. So, like, if I start doing house cleaning or gardening I'm in the midst of it and I forget about 11 o'clock so I would if it was the first thing in the afternoon it would be a little bit easier for me to kind of remember because I go okay after lunch that's what I'm going to do next so that would be a suggestion <laughs> thank you with having it like Thursday afternoons I do other things here We'll get you. Hold on. Yeah. Um, so thanks, Guy. Uh, Jonathan? <clears throat> and I guess unmute yourself as for Jonathan. And then some, something you thought was uh, that you thought was, you liked, and then uh, any suggestion you might have. Thank you. Um, I'm pretty new to the group. I appreciate you 
letting me zoom in. I'm not in Hamilton, <laughs> so the zoom is good for me. Also, the I didn't realize till today that it was on YouTube. <laughs> I guess I should have put two and two together when you were recording it last last time I was here. Um, but that that's would probably be helpful for me too in case I have conflicts over. Um, yeah, yeah, I probably shouldn't make too many comments because I've only been here for two sessions. <laughs> so I'll, I'll pass it along though. Thank you for the opportunity. Appreciate it. Thank, thanks, Jamison. Um, Joan? Uh, hi. So I just want to say I've loved every session, like, and I look forward to every one. The reminders are fantastic. Uh, at first, I was a little thinking I wouldn't really like the TED Talks ones, but they were great. And as you say, they did good discussion, you know, generate a good discussion. Um, uh, the timing, it's okay, but I, I think I would like to see a different time of day for sure. Um, even early evening would be nice at, you know, the end of your day. So you're all settled in with your jammies on, you know. Um mm -hmm. Uh, the Zoom has been a lifesaver for me and uh, really appreciate it. And I'm so proud that they are recorded because I think these are going to go down in history. You know, a bunch of seniors, queer seniors doing this. This is awesome. And it's been, um, you know, really so supportive of, of me out here in the boonies. Uh, I don't know about anybody else, but just seeing all your faces all the time. It's just it's always with me. Um, the special events were really fun and I would, I would like to see more of that, the special events and <laughs> like, you know, get together with some maybe dancey kind of music. If you feel like it, you can dance at the back of the room, like they did at the strawberry tea or a lot of people just mill around and chitty chat, you know, it's, it's a meeting, it's, it's a, a gathering and it's a little bit lively and. You know, it's got a nice vibe to it. So I would I would say like more of a dance party, you know, not exactly a rave, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> some, uh, you know, some nice upbeat music over at that end of the room and over here for people who don't really want to be around loudspeakers or, you know, have hearing issues. But, you know, you're still all part of it and people are just moving ar around. I would... Um, also like to suggest that we get away, get rid of the sit down affair. Although seating of course should always be an option, but the stand up table tops, they always work better than crowding people along a table. You know, it just, it just generates freedom and just that vibe. So I would say more of that, but all in all, I've loved it all. And, you know, thank you so much, all of you for, you know, slogging away because i know it's a lot of work i tried it i tried to do it and it was too much for me i handed it back to y'all so i totally appreciate the efforts that go into it so anyway Good. see how it thanks. goes yeah thanks joan uh, rachel um i don't really know what to say as one of the organizers it is a lot of work and um as much as people say they don't maybe sometimes love the topics to be honest sometimes that's all we can get it is work trying to put this together and people don't get back to you and we have these great ideas and we don't seem to be able to find a presenter so that's hard sometimes but um I guess what I loved was that the weeks that we did end up having to use a TED talk or something or like Joan said the social events really that's when you saw the community come together and everyone kind of visit and chat and I realized that Sometimes the stressing about presenters and topics is not such an, it's important, but I realized that we could even just take it back to the basics and that people just kind of enjoy the chance to visit and, and kind of have that community time together. So maybe next season, that is kind of a bigger takeaway is that, because for me, one of my favorite sessions was, I think it was at best a 10 minute Ted talk, but then the chat after and everybody talking. And I think that was one of the best ones for me. And I had a few people tell me that too. So. I think I really enjoyed that part of just watching the community build and that the people on Zoom can still feel part of the conversation and community, which is important. Um, yeah, so that's Good. my take. Good. Thanks, Rachel. So, and that everyone actually has a presenter oh. that 
literally has a name, email, they're ready to go. Like, send it our way. I hate to say it, but as the organizing committee, it is a lot of work. And you're chasing <laughs> all the time. But like, handing us ready to go things would be amazing. Thank, thanks, Rachel. So, um, um, yeah, it's your turn. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I really, I really enjoyed the TED Talks too and the discussions after. Um, I'm, I retired almost a year ago and I was just kind of at sea. So I just really appreciate this group. Um, I'm from the San Francisco Bay Area, so it's used to uh, a big community and I kind of like the small group and this, the interactions here, it's really Help me out of a rut. Okay, thanks. Um, you, sir. <laughs> Graham. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'd like to pick up on something that Larry said, the gloomy topics. I actually thought that they were excellent. Um, I think that the information that was, was disseminated in, in those presentations was really useful estate planning, funeral planning. Sure, it's not you know something that one likes to dwell on, but it's also necessary. And if we're talking about aging with pride, end of life things people get really concerned about. I don't happen to be one of them, but- uh, You will be. Well, <laughs> well I'm, I'm not gonna get old. I mean, it's just yeah. that simple, you know. Um, I, I thought a lot of the presentations were good. There were a couple that I think I could have done without, but that's me. And one of the, the values in a group like this or a, a series like this is different ideas for different people. Things that people, you know, other people might really like. I won't particularly and vice versa. So variety of of topics, if you like, is I think something we need to continue doing. Okay, good. Um, so, um, except, sorry, Jamie, back. <laughs> okay, um, I just like to. Um, I just like to say um, I really enjoyed all of you being so welcoming to me in this group and. Uh, I've enjoyed most of the sessions. I ran into Dushko Trivich at an uh, unrelated thing a while ago, and he remembered me from being here with us, um, and that was quite interesting. But yeah, th this group has quickly become one of my favorites. So thank you all for welcoming me into your group. Sure. Well, any suggestion? Um, nothing off the top of my head, but if I think of something, I'll let you know. Okay. So you're on. So we started coming this year, but I never really knew what the mandate of the group was. Like, I don't really, I've never really understood kind of, I, we do all kinds of different things, but what was the group originally formed for is something I don't know. Well, you, you said a mandate. Yeah. Mandate. <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 or actually, at all. <laughs> Actually, the whole idea is just to build connections among seniors in our community. Okay. And so if you want to meet new people or if you want to extend a friendship or that sort of thing, that's it. To also, so first is to create connections in the community. And second, then is just to present some information that you think would be helpful to seniors in our community. Okay. The two mandates. Yeah. Um, does anyone know what Six Sigma is? Yes. You've never heard of it? Yeah, I'm a Six Sigma black belt. So my mind kind of works like it's what is the root? What are, what, you know, where are we going to? What are we doing with this? And that's where I'm always at. Um, I have a lot of ideas, that I think, but I don't know what the whole direct, I didn't know the whole direction of what the group is all about. Um, you know, I, I think the social aspect is what is really important to me. The sessions have been wonderful. I haven't hated any of them. But I really, uh, you know, as an older gay couple too, we've always been looking to meet people. We don't know very many people in Edmonton. And this group doesn't serve that function in terms of social at all. You know, and I, I know there used to be a group like uh, Pride Timers or eight old- Prime Timers. Prime to, are they still in existence? Yeah. And so that's a different yeah. mandate altogether. Yeah, yeah. okay. And there's something, yeah. 
Yeah, but I, I love I love the social aspect of the group, and there's been some really great information. The thing that I enjoy is what Joan was saying too, is to have more time for discussion because we're always wanting to chat more, and it's over, you know. It, and again, the morning, in, the time in the morning interrupts. Like uh, he was saying, it interrupts my morning too. We have to get the dog ready at the park. It's costing me ten eighty to park on the ninth floor. It's not easy at this time of the day downtown to get it to. And I don't understand if we're part of the Pride Center. I don't know. I've never been there, but why are we not there? Is there no space or is it just, is it? Parking at the Pride Center is not it is a good joy either because it's right across the street from McEwen. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. during the year, yeah. um, all the parking around the school year, it's, it's oh, very yeah, I can full. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it does have a fairly good connection to the LRT. Uh, yeah. And, and Center, but it was well, more. Sorry, go ahead. Just I, it was also that Sage offered social work support to oh, seniors. It's a great facility in our community. Yeah. It was one of the only senior centers that does provide, you know, a, a supportive environment for the two SLGB people. Yeah. yeah, we're working on the other ones. Yes, but Sage right now is that okay? Go ahead. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks. Rachel? Kind of share that same thing that feedback in the beginning is that we had some seniors that hadn't really officially come out either and so to actually say they're going to the pride center or have their dats drop them at the side pride center or whatever was a little too much in the beginning whereas to say they were just going to sage or senior center it was a little easier transition um and then also we had a lot of people that eric like eric said there's the opportunity for joining in social work supports but then also um kind of becoming aware of some of the other rec programming going on and kind of joining in the bigger piece of the community sometimes. So um, that was kind of all encompassing the reasons. Okay. Anything else? No, I'm good. No, thanks. Good, thank you. So you're on. Put the glasses on. <laughs> I understand perfectly. <laughs> um, for the loneliness, it's completely out of my life completely because of this program that I've been part of. And I really recommend, uh, commend everybody that allowed me to be here uh, because I've been really feeling your same, the same feeling. So I gave thank you. And, and it breaks me out of the shyness being here. Um, the special events were incredible. I'm so sorry I missed the uh, strawberry. Yeah. Um, and that's basically okay. Uh, I have a lot of knowledge in um, getting help uh, with medical uh, issues, and I had very good support as a senior. Eyes were done, stints, uh, a whole a whole list of things that I had done to myself, which I wouldn't have ever had done if I wasn't sixty five. So, uh, anyhow, if is there any quest, if there's any uh, information that you want to know about how I got all this done in the, on me, and then I really the next next sessions I'll be able to if I'm able to tell you exactly how I got got through that stuff. Next, thank you. Yes, I I like this group. I'm a new the newest member of the. L G P W. The queer to community because I found out I was five six years ago. Yeah. And I liked every session, especially TED talks. Mm -hmm. Suggestions. And the yeah. Every session, yeah. I like the supportive environment of this group, and my suggestion is, if stage opens up wide, you guys will lose the first day and find another day to have this group. And keep it in the morning. Okay. Larry? 
I'm going to be quite specific for about my needs. Uh, I've been at this for five years. I intend to continue attending, but I think I've given you what I what I everything that I've had as far as being part of the organizing uh, committee. So I'm going to step away from that function. Uh, the things that I think really work here in some ways surprised me, and there are two things. One, picking up on what Grant said, I think I had the impression that simply talking about generic seniors' issues in the in a gay context was helpful for people. So hard of hearing, it doesn't affect just gays, <laughs> but but it was it was not to have to worry about uh, that you're going to give something away was real important. And, and that sort of surprised me. I didn't expect that would come out as much. And secondly, I thought in terms of stimulating discussion, the TED Talks really were mm -hmm. successful. And I, that's, I'd really like to see us uh, uh, use, uh, use those uh, more frequently than we have done, uh, done now. So those would be uh, thing. I think we should rethink of the time the evening would be wonderful, but we have people, you know, uh, unless somebody is going to offer their home, and I'm, I'm not sure we can do that, <laughs> uh, uh, the, then we need to be sensitive to the needs of people whose workday ends at, at five o'clock and, yeah. and so on. Yeah. Uh, I think, however, I'm, that 11 o'clock probably is about as bad a time as we could do. Could choose, and I don't remember why we chose it even. Uh, but the the uh, into the early afternoon might be uh, more uh, uh, a better idea. So so before I um, just open a little further, um, I'll just make a couple comments myself, um, and that too. I think that uh, uh, first of all that that I've uh, the sessions um, that that and I have attended most of them. Um, have gone uh, uh, quite well in terms of being quite well organized and uh, topics interesting, it's more interesting than you know, some topics not as interesting to me, some very interesting. Um, and I think that that's, that's part of, you know, being part of anything like that. Um, and with that is also the social element. I must say being able to see a chat with folks kind of thing is I, I find very great. And I, I'm, you know, I, um, like some of the others here, I live by myself. You know, that, so a, a social aspect, I think, is valuable. Uh, in terms of suggestions, um, I think there are all kinds of, of possibilities that sound quite promising to me. Um, and that I think, for example, there is knowing that uh, there are some of the other senior centers and that, that we might, during a year, go to two other senior centers for a special event mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. call it whatever and 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 so that other uh, that people who are at that center would also take part in that one particular one that we had now and and um and, and many senior centers have uh, capability of showing stuff online and and we could probably make those a little bit of a learning aspect as well as you know something that was you know kind of fun or interesting or whatever and many senior centers are looking for things and that too they probably you know they would probably provide coffee and stuff and that too if we were only once a year kind of thing that too so i think that might be be valuable um i, I think the that we might want to look at whether the currently um as we do um the the uh sessions on um uh, you know, every Thursday that is maybe look at maybe we want to do um, uh, sessions like uh, uh, one session a month every month rather than four in a row during a month. I mean, maybe that's a, that's another thought kind of thing that mm -hmm. as well. Um, uh, obviously, that takes work, a little work of presentation and that, but including the Christmas one, the, the tea. Um, and the other one, we have the three, uh, yeah, yeah, kind of thing in that as well. And if we did something that was cel cel uh, was a celebration kind of at another center, that that would be another fourth one. And then look at at um, uh, seven or eight sessions, individual sessions that were maybe on Tuesdays or on a couple days of the week in that as well. Um, 
and that, that that might be another kind of possibility. So that's just another thought. Yeah. Um, so yeah, then I'll, I'll open it up to any comments you want to make, and we'll just start. And that you're first. I saw your hand go up. <laughs> <laughs> Getting yeah. back to the the time issue, um, <clears throat> how many of the people who have been part of this are still working? Uh, you know, it's a seniors group. My 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 sense is that most people are not working anymore. I, I'm thinking about some of the people who last year were online quite regularly and aren't, and they're all retired. Um, it's, you know, we're never going to find a time that will accommodate everybody. Right. It's just not possible. Um, so, you know, it, it seems that 11 o'clock on Thursday morning isn't a bad time for most people. Okay. Uh, uh, Eric? Two things. Before I forget, <laughs> I have to say what a fantastic partner Sage has been okay. for us. Now, amazingly supportive. Uh, Rachel giving her time, Jamie giving her time, and the support that we've received that nobody knows about, but the support that we've received from Sage in general, Karen mm -hmm. and the executive. have been a wonderful partner. So, I just wanted to say that. Yep. Um, the second thing is, if we were to go more, and that's what I wanted to throw out, the possibility of one broadcast meeting per month. So um, But the possibility of maybe having, if, if it is a weekly coffee group, mm. maybe concept of a philosopher's cafe, somebody comes up with that topic and throws it on the table and you just chat around. And yeah. If it was me talking, the conversation would go many different areas. <laughs> yeah. I can be assigned talking. <laughs> but I'm just wondering if that might be if that might be workable because the whole sorry, the whole concept of lining up speakers, making sure mm -hmm. we've got the Zoom set up done, yeah, yeah. And yep. all the rest of it can be quite exclusive. But mm -hmm. I I I love coming here. I love seeing all of you. Yeah, every yeah. week, yeah. and yeah. it's a great enjoyment. So that's I, I like this idea of the philosophers cafe. Yeah, and it seems to me that if there's a topic that you know, it's Ruth, right? Yes. Yeah. If if Ruth was really interested in it and she knew somebody who was expert in that field, she could bring that person along. And mm -hmm. hey, you've got a presentation. You've got discussion. And it doesn't have to be organized in events. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I think it's a great idea. The philosopher, I love that idea a lot. You can bring people with you, and also if you're going to a coffee shop, they may help in some way sponsoring a coffee for people to have them in there. You're going to create customer flow. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So you know, from a, a building of, of membership and a building of of a yeah. neighbor and no. community, I think it's a great idea. But the, but. One problem with having a philosopher's cafe in a cap coffee shop, people will you know, have to pay for coffee. We get our coffee free here. But yeah. maybe not. We could maybe work something yeah. with them. Yeah. Because yeah. We're, we're occupying your place. We, we, yeah. yeah. We could uh, get that donated. I don't think that'd be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or have a philosopher's ca cafe in a restaurant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Larry? It strikes me, I know one or two of you very well, and I know a good number of you not at all. And similarly, a number of you, we, we don't know me at all. So I think some way of uh, increasing the connection between the members of the group, whether that's mm -hmm. through something like Philosopher's Cafe or having new people join the organizing committee, even if it's only to bring a friend every once in a while, would be really important in terms of strengthening uh, the group in the long term. Right. Is it a nonprofit group? Or are we nonprofit? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We are. Yeah. And can I ask for even above nonprofit, it's no <laughs> <money>. profit, yeah. <laughs> so now that's gonna be my next question. Where does money come from for you know having entertainment for well we um 
the Evans and Pride Senior Group, which is now a nonprofit organization, and because it never is any profit, but it's actually registered. Yeah, yeah. Kind of that too. We've gotten some grants primarily from the city, one major grant from the federal government for yeah. projects. And this was one of the ones that, that we got some money through the federal government to, uh, to do. And we still have some of that money. Um, left in that, in that because it uh, this is a cheap venture, yeah, you know. <laughs> so, don't call me cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Who are you calling <laughs> cheap? Yeah. Yeah. So, so for example, the only thing we've spent money on uh, is, is the, the tea, the strawberry tea kind of thing, in that but this isn't costing us anything money wise, yeah, kind of thing in that as well. Yeah. So, um, so that was also one of the factors is, is uh, something that would not be, you know, very expensive yeah. and wouldn't cost. The entertainment, anything. the three yeah. entertainment events are the only things. That yeah, yeah, yeah. The that, 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 we that, belong so. to a couple other groups and there's a small membership fee that always goes. Yeah, we, we, and it would never ask for anybody. Yeah. I mean, one of the other groups that, uh, that I that no longer exists, but they used to have a, a, a cup where you could yeah, throw some money donation. in by a coffee machine if you wanted. And they... That they they weren't trying to raise a huge amount, you know, yeah. to, you know but they yeah. get pretty enough to be able to cover coffee and that too. So yeah, there are ways to do that. Yeah, because like we we belong to Gay, Gay Camping Alberta. I don't know if you guys know about yeah. that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a fantastic yeah. group. It's fifteen dollars a year. Yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah, that to me, it's so well worth. That's Eagle Creek camping. It's yeah, really yeah. a great campsite. Yeah, yeah. Some friends of mine. Yeah, I, are I, they? Yeah, we go there. Yeah, I love it. I, yeah, uh, when I was mentioning before about doing uh, like one, going to one other center, um, uh, once a, a year. Uh, what I would envision is that the, we would have a thing that it was actually a topic that people, anyone, could come to, yeah. and then the celebration, and I, and also whether that might build some additional people that become involved yeah. that because then they can yeah. come or they can watch it on, you know, virtually or whatever. Yeah, I think it's one way. Yes. I think the other is that that we haven't looked at, what, um, if we did something and we were looking at, uh, just to take, you know, I said once a month or whatever, that, that we actually advertise that in, like Sage it has newsletter that goes out. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the senior centers have that. And, and so if we had that, we could start to put that information into some of those other places and then most of them, I, I don't know what the safe would charge to put, put in, in there. I don't think so. And most of the other newsletters would We're in there. Don't, don't. Yeah. Oh, we're in the, the program, right? Yeah. 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 Oh. And Sage covers our coffee and cookies each week, in case anyone was wondering. That's out of the community oh. animation budget. And then, yeah, it's always in our newsletter and calendar every yeah. Yeah, yeah. week yeah. on our website. Yeah. And I think that it's true of a lot of the others. You know, it, it's just another way to um, get word out about um, uh, either attending yeah. or on, watching online, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Building, building on your idea, yeah. send the posters for our events to other senior centers. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yeah and I'm talking about once a year that they had yeah. something like that. You know, kind of thing. Is it the is it this thing yeah. open to other seniors in the community to go to come to? Oh yeah, to come here. Uh, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. We would only do the once at their place. Yeah. And then <laughs> hope some of some of them would come here. Yeah. Uh Derek. Two things. Two things. One is uh one of our concerns at the beginning was to be, because we used to have an over the rainbow group that met for coffee here at the yeah, stage. Yeah. But there would never be any more than two or three people there, which for the two or three people that were there, very, yeah. very good. Mm -hmm. But we were a little bit concerned when we started this that if we just say come for coffee, that the people would, if you don't know anybody, it's sort of a, yeah, yeah. a, yeah. Barrier, yeah. a barrier. Yeah, I mean, definitely a barrier. Yeah. But the other thing, and I, I did a, presentation last week at CISA on aging with pride and there was quite a few both there and at the strawberry tea there are quite a few people not from the 2SLGBTQ community and I think that's one of the things that we need to yes let's focus in on this but let's make sure that we keep inviting the other people in because last week when I did that presentation at CISA there are a lot of really good questions and comments. So 
Yeah, that's just yeah. the yeah. whole the whole thought. Oh, right. Go ahead, Larry. Yeah. The seniors' residence that I was in actually had a bus reserved to bring people to uh, the oh. Strawberry Tea. There, there were only a couple of takers, and we needed at least four to get it. But advertising to see directly into seniors' residences is another yeah. good way yeah. of reaching people. In addition, there are some groups in which we can probably be a little more assertive in our advertising, prime timers, oh, yeah, yeah. suits and suits, yeah, yeah. so on. Uh, and, you know, I think we need to be a little more active in reaching out right. in various, to, to various uh, right. venues uh, across the city. And another thing, and I, I don't know whether it's it's pie in the sky or not, but it does strike me, particularly listening to Joan, that large, that group of, of queer people who are in the small towns yeah. and so yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then since we have a Zoom connection in private, it would be a, a wonderful opportunity yeah, 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 for, yeah. for those people, yeah. but how to reach them. That's, That's exactly you know? the problem, yeah, right. And the I think, one place we have reached out was to White Corp because they reached out to uh, to us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I haven't seen any takers, but maybe they did not lie. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I think that um, uh, just picking up on uh, and your on your point that you're making, I think it's also that um, um, it, as Joan said, for for like the, the tea, etc., and that a uh, lot of people like her come in yeah. for that. And if we did something, I'm just going back to. One event at some other center that, and like if we did it at CESA, for example, yeah. so I'm thinking you know, parking is easy, lots yeah. of parking there, yeah. and it's just one time. I think we'd find well, some of those yeah. folks from that, mm -hmm. that don't live close to the yeah. city would come to something like that once, kind of thing, that as well, and then come online. Oh. Yeah, we could get them. It's just a thought. Well, so, yeah. some further thoughts because we're almost out of time. We've had a lot one of thing having it at. Our, another center. Some of us don't drive. I take the bus. bus. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. There's all kinds of possibilities. Yeah. But I, but for people outside of town, I realize yeah. that it's not quite as, as simple. But but like like Joan said, she she came with a couple other friends as well out of town. The one time, those other friends will you know they won't be coming, but they may come online. No, okay. we, and I remember we had a, a guy from uh, uh, Cold Lake who had come yes. down. Yes, for, remember uh, the yes. Christmas. Uh, yeah, yeah, coming down to the Christmas one. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 You know, one more thing is really important to revitalize the organizing committee. Yeah. Yes, I know that too. I've been with this for several years now, and I know that I should be doing more reach out and more advertising and that sort of stuff, but. Yeah, yeah. Between what I do here and some of the other projects that I'm involved in, I'm old. <laughs> you know, I, I just don't have the energy. That, right? You know, um, and that happens. And and so revitalizing the organizing committee to have more people who are available to do more outreach and that sort of yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. that would be yeah. very very helpful. Yeah. And that's what I was wondering is. Why are we not asked to do things? Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes. not fake cookies, just fake That's cookies. That's your job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wait, no, you, you just said it. You didn't wait to be asked. You put yourself out there. <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah. I think, that's, I think so, uh, you know, certainly Larry, Rachel, and Jamie. Um, yeah. Do amazing work for this, and you have no idea how much work goes on. Yeah, yeah, the yeah background. It's okay. pretty intensive, but it's yeah. greatly appreciated. And yeah. it's not all on me, it's no. they do an awful lot, and they're overwhelmed as well. Yeah, so, so as, as we, we finish up, um, the excited, I know we all, you know, watch the time, and I think it's a benefit of the, the, the beginning and an end. Yeah, that I, I strongly <laughs> support that, that it yeah. isn't just. Open ended, and you know, it could go on as long as people stay around and give me a break. You know, just being that, um, because some of us know when to shut up the, for a while, and then that should be over, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, but I would like to ask, um, uh, Rachel and Eric and uh, Larry if you would do a little summary of some sort of suggestions that have come forward that we can 
then mull over it a little bit more. Eric has been taking it. Okay, good. So, so um, that, you know, fine. I, as I think that that um, that will be helpful uh, to start looking at a few other decisions, including, uh, and I appreciate that that getting information out to others, um, you know, will take some other things. But but we could we could you know find a way to pay for a little of that so that somebody was doing that kind of thing and getting it out to the groups or whatever. We actually need a formal communication. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, but also if we really watched it so that we had stuff so that, yeah. that we were putting in that was like yeah. the next six months. So rather than yeah. you know, one week this week and next week and then I, I'm not saying anyway, yeah. I might, it's just a thought. And I, so I, I think the suggestions are that we can see what we can make. A little fearful about taking on what looks like an open-ended and impossible project. Yeah. Give us something that you would like to do that has a beginning and an end and do it. And uh, yeah, we'll, yeah. the rest of us will be there moving, I think, to support you. Well, uh, and, and I, yes, and I think there's, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, I haven't given an opportunity to anybody that's online. If you have anything further to add, we have a couple minutes. So let me start with Joan. Do you have anything further to add? Uh, no, I, I loved it all. The time was the only thing I could see, you know, a lot of people might struggle with. It worked for me. I loved all the variety of topics, the fact that it's recorded. It's all good. And the input and the questions and the discussions were fantastic. So really, I have more good to say about it than, you know, criticism. Thanks, but, uh, yeah. Thanks Jim. Jonathan. You're muted. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, very interesting discussion. I probably don't really have anything to add. Like, I guess I think you said this is the last meeting for summer. Have a good summer, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> good. Yeah. Thanks, Jonathan. Uh, Guy? Yeah. Guy? Um, Guy I, was, I was shy to mention that the most important thing for me was the social connection. Um, if I was, what would help me if, it, if the sessions were an hour and a half, so it would make going downtown worthwhile. Um, mm. Going for an hour is not okay. so much. Yeah, yeah. okay, thanks. Um, uh, Rachel, anything further to add? Well, sounds like we need to put Victor to work. I think that's Victor. I can't see to the <laughs> <laughs> And the twist the little, with the little doggies and flowers. <laughs> um, actually, you say okay. that because I think that's true. Often our discussion is just kind of going to get going and we say, oh, there's the time. It's 12 o'clock. So maybe that is important. Let it go to 1230 and then have kind of that end of the speaker, but a chance for discussion after, which would be maybe well, an important component. We're having it on Thursday, no, 12.30. Like me, I have other things to do here. But nobody's well, then, leaving yeah. early if you have to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. we need stuff, Jim. That's what I'm yeah. hearing. Anyways, okay. I do hear that's an important component. So I think maybe, I mean, as much as we don't get a lot of feedback from the people not coming. It's important yeah. to me to take, <laughs> yeah. take the feedback of the people that are here and make it the group that they really want and need. So, okay, great. Thank you. So, you all do the ending lines. Well, listen, uh, I I'd like to do that because first of all, the fantastic support from Sage, the personal contribution of Rachel. And Jamie, uh, Larry, and you know, has worked tirelessly on this and is always a good advisor for us. So, uh, just thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, really you know, enjoyed meeting everyone, and so it's been wonderful for me. I think, on, on behalf of the Asian with Pride, thank you all for attending, and uh, we hope that we'll be able to launch season four in the uh, in October. Uh, circulate some notes and hopefully we can 
with Victor and Ken's work. And thank you to you too. Yeah. 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 So, okay, I guess we're probably goodbye. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, hey, hey, Joe. <laughs> Peace out. Love you guys. Bye. Love you. Bye. 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 Bye.